Hello, and welcome to Casting Roles, a persistent D&D campaign played by a bunch of theater nerds. Now, things look a little bit different because uh, when we were recording episode 20, we lost our audio uh, for the first half of the show. So these guys over here are not responding to anything that I'm saying because this is the video that has no audio. Um, but uh, we did manage to save the last uh, 45 minutes or so of the stream, and we want to share that with you as a, uh, a celebration of episode 20. And a thanks for all of the viewers and everybody who's tuned in uh, and, and done those things. So I'm going to do the quick rundown of, of what you missed, which, while a really cool battle, um, wasn't a whole lot narrative. Um, so the ticket takers had traveled through uh, the Feywild and a, an attempt to return a lost Kelpie uh, named Miranda uh, to her home, uh, which happened to be in the unseely side of the Feywild, uh, making their way through uh, the Summer Court, meeting Robin Goodfellow and making a deal with him uh, to restore or to re recover the the true name of a devil that was terrorizing both the Prime Plane and the Feywild. Um, they then crossed over into the uh, the borderlands, uh, which required them to check their intelligence, their ability to solve a few riddles, to face their darkest fears, and then ultimately to do battle with a shadow drake, which was actually some summer court uh, members who were um, on a mission into the the unseely side uh, and thought that the the ticket takers were unseely members um, there to stop them. Um, they then traveled through an area abandoned by some very large spiders, apparently, and made their way to the lake, where they discovered that it was currently inhabited by a creature, uh, one hydra-like in nature, but uh, vines and flowers sprouting from its, its head. Uh, after trying to coax it out of its hole, uh, the ticket takers eventually engaged with this creature, and it was uh, a monstrosity uh, with different flower heads that had different abilities and attacks um, and every time they would slice off one of the vines two more would sprout in its place uh, producing two more flowers uh, to do damage to the party um, a tough battle ensued uh, mar going down Soros close to to dropping um, princess alora uh, wielded uh, in the air by a vine and, and shaken around uh, but ultimately the ticket takers did come to a state of success downing the the, the evil creature after after uh, Mar discovered that acid would prevent the vines from regrowing. Um, so we join the ticket takers here in the aftermath of that battle as they um, harvest the the corpse of the flower monster, uh, take some of its uh, venom, uh, discover a partially desiccated or, or partially digested uh, fey creature within its uh, stomach area. Um, and Mar uh, finding Miranda who had gone to a, a hiding place uh, and now returning her to her home. So let's go ahead and uh, join in with the ticket takers and get our intro in here. But thank you so much for joining us for episode 20. Uh, and here's to 20 more. So you take the 10 minutes to ritually cast Identify, and then um, you, um, so you're kind of thinking about it, and, and you're, you're identifying, and 10 minutes later, like, there's, you don't sense any kind of magical essence from them at all, so you can't um, see anything there. Oh, okay. Stick in the bag of holding for later. Yeah. It would probably take some time with, uh, you know, your alchemy peeps or your herbalist peeps to try to figure out what these do yeah cool when um abel was burning the plants was anything exciting happen okay so Explain. yeah so while abel goes over there to burn everything so it takes a little bit for of your flamethrower to to get things to catch light but once you dry out the flowers enough, they start to burn and crisp and wilt at the edges. And you notice that, like, as you're hitting them, they kind of are trying to release this pollen. Uh, but as the pollen kind of bursts up, it, poof, like, goes up into kind of this flame of, of, of you know, from the, the fire. Um, and 
there's it when it burns the the flames change color to like this bluish green flame for a moment of just like flashing in the in this twilight forest um and then uh, eventually you're able to kind of clear it uh and now you're kind of left with just the charred remains of all these flowers and at the center the large body of the dire wolf um there covered with these uh flowers from growing out of its skin that like wrapped around its ribs it's kind of all over the place there but um there wasn't uh because it was the flame it was able to prevent any kind of uh blowback from re releasing all that pollen so there's a dead dire wolf entangled in the bushes yeah the, the flowers seem to be kind of centered around that dead dire wolf <laughs> okay does it look like the dire wolf was consumed by the bushes or his death caused the bushes to grow there? Um, you can go right, now that you're up there and kind of checking it out, you can roll a, a nature check. I'm just curious of the, the nature of how these things sprout or are they like carnivorous almost? Triffids. What am I rolling? Nature? Nature, yeah. Plus a four, plus four, an eighteen. An eighteen. Um, so as you're kind of looking closely at it, like you see the uh, the root structure of these uh, the plants that were all around the dire wolf seem to be kind of. If you can imagine that the dire wolf still had skin covering it, that the the mm -hmm. roots would have gone under the skin and spread out along the skeletal structure of the dire wolf. So it's almost as if mm. they were growing out of the dire wolf's body. And from here where it died, they seem to have spread out from the dire wolf. So it's like an a infection. Host, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the dire wolf was their Jeez. host. Yeah. Is there a central point or like an origin point that we can determine? The dire wolf is the origin. The like the center, like the largest mass of flowers was around the dire wolf, and then the further they got away from the dire wolf, the the more sparse they were. No, not, not what I'm saying is now that we burned up to the dire wolf, is there like a sprout? Like the 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 sack was the central point <laughs> of the hydra. Right, right. So is there so, is there something akin to that? in the dire wolf no uh yeah, like it, where the dire wolf would have been infected or something like no, that like you don't see like any like internal organ or anything that they're growing out of um it just seems like the roots are wrapped and spread around the skeletal structure um there's a few kind of on the rib area most of them seem to be running down the spine like they would have been intertangled with the uh, the dire wolf's like spinal cord you yeah That is terrifying. I want to leave here as soon as possible. <laughs> I think you should burn the rest of the flowers. Yeah, that's. I'm just going to go around and just trying to clear as much as I can to make this as safe as possible for Miranda. Okay. If she is going to end up staying here. Okay. So over the course of the next ten minutes or so, you clear um the the flowers from that side of the pool there are some that are underwater not very many just a couple there's like five or six Jeez. that are under the water that you can't seem to get to um but they're very sparse uh, but you get the I got those. okay so you want to get into the water and go go deal with those come on up. uh how are you going to try to get rid of them by wrenching them out with my hands okay um so go ahead and make well there's there's five or six so let's just go ahead and do um three uh dex checks uh and this will cover getting the six free dex if i'm like thin at the store uh, like yeah. so because they're underwater um there's not as much of a risk of the pollen like splashing oh, okay, in good, your face good, good. Yeah. um so this is can you release them without like accidentally like pulling too hard and like getting the flower like closer to your face underwater like can you keep away from the pollen that does release and kind of drifts through the water so just dexterity checks yeah you said three yeah three <coughs> that's an eight 
an 11, and an 18. Okay, so we'll say, like, so you get four of them done pretty quickly. You get the fifth one. And as you're going to get the sixth one, you're kind of getting a little tired under the water. And you, you yank, and it doesn't release the way the other one's kind of released as quickly. And when you pull again, uh, like, you rip back, and this torrent of water kind of rushes past you. Uh, and the, the pollen with it kind of coats across your face. Um, and for a moment, you feel like um, everything around you is kind of moving through jelly, um, and you are slowed. <laughs> so, so your movement is halved. <laughs> you cannot take reactions. And on a turn, you can only take one reaction. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys uh eventually come on it kind of comes out of the water and you see him swimming back to the shore but it's like, it's like this slow motion paddle through I the water i just yeah. float back you just float back to the shore i just do the otter thing on top yeah there you go uh, <laughs> <laughs> very slowly but arrives back at the shore um so you kind of got that all right i'll help him out of the water all right burn the flowers um, so the flowers are burnt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the ones that Kaimana yeah. pulled out are they kind of drift to the edge and sort and uh, Abel burns them at the edge of the the water as well. Um, but you guys seem to have cleared out all the flowers around um, her lake or her pond. One more question, and then I'm done. Do we see any other kelpie or any other creatures living in this pond? Um, you can go and roll a uh, perception check. Oh, Jesus. I should have asked. <laughs> perception? Yeah. Hey, sure, it's a plus two. Why not? An 11 plus two, a 13? Uh, 13. Okay. Um, so you're looking around, and um, it you don't see anything living. In fact, the, the, the complete ability lack of abundance of life is surprising mm. like this pond looks like i mean like you feel like there would be you know dragonflies and frogs and fish and it, it is yeah nothing we may need to find a different place for her yeah I guess I'll just head up with Marlo. Can she I have been there. like investigate or like doing something to try to see if I can figure out if there's any like actual source of where the feeling of being watched is coming from, or if it's just like this omnipresent thing. Okay. Um, go ahead and um, just roll another perception check to see if you can narrow things down a little and bit. And it's not like I wouldn't get advantage because it's not like Faye or anything, right? Uh, it it's is like Faye. A... You can roll it. It is Faye. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, so that is a 22. 22. Okay. So it's, it's, you get the sense like at some point it feels like it's coming from all directions. Um, and so it's just like this a very oppressive feeling of being watch like there's a mm -hmm. like a person standing over your shoulder just beaming into your the, the side of your face and every time you turn in that direction there's nothing there and whatever and so you you kind of walk back with miranda towards the lake and she's much more comfortably heading towards the lake she doesn't seem mm -hmm. afraid of it anymore <clears throat> as soon as you get to the edge she immediately bounds into it and it starts swimming around and you see her transform back into her kelpie form and she's swimming around in the lake and diving in and kind of going around at some point she does rise back up and she's just kind of staring at you. But then you, with your perception as you're kind of your heightened senses, you realize she's looking back the direction you came from, like over your shoulder mm -hmm. and you turn around and look, and this is finally, you kind of finally see up on the Ridge, there are four figures all riding horses that seem to be made of, flaming shadow um each in a <clears throat> kind of it's oddly it looks like uh, armor that's made out of leaves and vines but also of silver like it's glinting in the light from the the twilight thing and they're wearing these uh these helmets that have kind of like this jagged almost like um 
bark like structure but still made of metal with uh kind of carved out exaggerated eyes that are kind of flaming blue with these exaggerated horns coming off the top and they're just sitting atop their horses um, looking down in your direction uh i'm gonna turn back around and look at miranda who you wouldn't know you wouldn't know who that is which are you couldn't be like cool with them okay well i think we've seen all there is to see here everyone <laughs> <laughs> time to leave mm -hmm. uh at, at this point like anybody who's around and looking at where sort uh where uh marlo was looking uh she's kind of she glances up in maybe not fear but apprehension at this ridge and you don't see what she sees so we can't see what Marlo was saying mm -mm. you can try to roll oh. a perception check to see what she's trying to see <clears throat> no i don't want to okay <laughs> I can rather live in ignorance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Don't let us know if it's something we need to worry about. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, and at that point, Marlo, you, you kind of hear a voice coming from that direction, but also just kind of in your head. Um, and uh, it says, we were not quite sure that you would be a worthy prey, but seeing how you handled this beast might make it a fun game. Uh, we were actually just on our way out. That is rough timing. We're just we're gonna we're gonna go back where we came from. Uh, thank thank you for your service. Uh, I'll just good good talking to you. <laughs> and, <laughs> is um, that a good persuasion check right there? <laughs> uh, that yeah, you can roll a persuasion check. They are standing where you came from. Okay. They're up well, on the the. the, the uh, forgive me if I'm remiss remembering. There's the like thing, the place that I think is okay, the exit. Okay, so you want to um, head towards the. Right? You want to head towards. We want to follow the spiders. The order exit. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, go ahead and roll a persuasion check. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna love this. Oh boy, four. <laughs> uh, it <laughs> says for each of them. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they're gonna love me. It, he, uh, the voice kind of laughs. Um, <laughs> oh. Pity mortal, you think you have a choice to play or not? The wild hunt chooses its quarry. Not the wild hunt. Jesus. Uh, yeah, what if we reschedule? We are, we're supposed to come back here in about like six months time. I could just just put it in the calendar. That's not okay. The the one there's a the one sitting next to the one that you realize has kind of been talking to you. You hear uh, this a female voice come into your your head at that point, and it just says, "We shall reschedule. Um, let's say thirty seconds." Hey guys, we need to run. I'm gonna grab Miranda <laughs> and I'm gonna gun for that. All right, so you all you all watch as Marlo takes off like <laughs> past the the lake, and she's heading that way, um, and. Miranda, like the moment the wild hunt started to speak to you, Mar, Miranda dove yeah. under the water and she sank under the water and she seems comfortable in the location. Okay, that you and then I'm, not gonna, I'm just going to go. All right, so Mar takes off running. Who's going to, uh, is it, what are you guys doing now that you've seen Marlo running? Running? Uh, I, I, I look at Laura. Josh. Go ahead. Am I still slow? Uh, yes. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Can I pick oh, Kaimana? Oh, if, I had, if I had seen Kaimana being slow, I think I would have grabbed Kaimana. Okay, so that Mar, you run okay. past and you grab Kaimana, so Kaimana will go second. Um, who's going to yeah, chase after that? Yeah, I on my back. Uh, then Abel? Yeah, I'm going to run. I'm going to, like, tap Alora on the shoulder, like, let's go, and right. start running. And then Alora, and then Sora, so you're going to bring up the rear? Yeah, I, I look at Alora and go, now's the time when we run, apparently. Um, and, and I'll take the rear because I'm the one who can cover the most ground, so if I need to accelerate away from something, I can. All right, yeah. So Okay, so what we're going to be entering into then is a chase sequence. Um, <laughs> and so um, you go, and like there's the moment where Mars starts running, and you guys are like deeply focused on where she was looking, and like for a moment there's just this like shimmering vision of these four nightmarish creatures uh you know riding literally 
nightmares. Um, like up on the ridge, and then they kind of shade out, shade out of your vision again. Mar being the only one who rolled perception to see if they, she could spot them, um, and so you get a, you catch a glimpse of what she's looking at as you all start taking off. Um, so each round, you kind of you have some options. So you can dash um, a number of times equal to three plus your Constitution modifier. Um, so there's going to be five rounds. So if you have a zero con modifier, you would, you could dash for three of the rounds. Um, but if you have, you know, if you have five, you could dash for all five of them. Um, and you can choose to do anything throughout the course of this. You can stop and throw spells or whatever, but you each go each round, um, kind of one at a time to see what you're doing, how much ground you cover, if you come across any obstacles that might slow your progress down. And then the wild hunt will go, um, after Saurus and then we'll, we'll start back at the next round. All right, so Mar, at the top of the round, um, with Kaimana in tow, uh, go ahead and just roll a, uh, just a strength check to see if you can maintain your speed by while carrying Kaimana. Oh boy, a strength check, what I'm best at. <laughs> negative one. <laughs> oh God. Roll not, a two. Not as bad as the negative two that you rolled last no, time. No, it's just... It's just you know, the second worst thing I could have rolled. Okay, so um, for the, the so the first round, Mar, you um, are running at half speed. Um, and so as you're kind of going and, and chugging, like Abel catches up with you, Alora catches up with you, Soros is catching up with you, and you are kind of slowing down a little bit. Okay, uh, then I'm gonna dash and hopefully just maintain like normal speed. Okay, good. So, uh, so um, Abel and Alora pull ahead, but then you're able to kind of hold on with them at that. So you that's one dash down um, and you, What's your con modifier? Plus two. Okay, so you could you could potentially do, go off. I can dash every round. Yep. Um, good. Um, and then at the end of your round, um, Mar, go ahead and roll an, a d20 for me, please. A seven. A seven. Um, all right, so as you are running, like uh, you're, tr you're holding Kamana kind of in front of you and you're kind of cradling him. And there's a moment mm -hmm. where you're kind of charging forward and then you kind of kind of bust forward with your speed on the dash and you cut around a, a corner and there's a, a root that you don't see uh, kind of charging forward and you catch it with the you know the heel of your boot and it kind of trips you up and you roll forward and you lose um, half of that dash movement so your other cool. group kind of comes forward so you now drop to the back of the group all right all right so mar drops to the back um all right, so Kaimana, go ahead and at the start of your turn, make a constitution saving throw. Uh, that is a natural 20. All right. 20. So um, nice. as soon as Mar like tumbles to the ground and you're in her grasp, and as she kind of, uh, as she kind of tries to stand up, you fall out. And the moment you kind of hit the ground, you feel like, like you're, you start to loosen up and you gain full faculties of your movement and the slow fades. Um, so you can dash on this round or you can choose to do something else on this round. I am, do I have any clue where they are behind it? So as um, you were leaving, the only thing you caught was a, a glimpse and they were just up on the ridge. So you're not sure like, like the, you guys are, he, Mar was leading the path, and the, the 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 trail of spiders seemed to be heading towards this kind of winding forest path that he, headed into the forest, but yeah. kind of curved around, um, slightly dense underbrush, but a very clear, almost like a game path or something like that. Um, so you can kind of see the path that you would need to go, and you saw that these creatures were on horseback, so you probably feel like they would not be able to just you know tear through the forest. I am, um, how many actions do I have? Just one? Just one. So you can dash or you can do a spell or something like that. Right. I will shape change. Okay. To a horse. Okay. So that increases mm -hmm. your movement speed to like 45? Yes. Nice. So that would uh, make Kaimana jump up to the top 
right. So <laughs> you t you tear off a head as a horse uh, and leave come, uh, leave Mar behind. <laughs> she no, kind of pulls I herself. To Mar. Oh. As as I'm catching up to them, I'll I'll help pick Mar up and throw her onto the horse. Okay, so when it gets around to Soros's turn, we'll be able to get you up uh, onto the the horse then. Good, because be... I had to make a strength check to get on the horse. I wasn't gonna do yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be you'll be riding on Kaimana's back on the next round. So nice. So that puts Mar and Kaimana. It's more like a deck check to me. Yeah. Though, right? Um, all right, good. Um, and then, so that's your action, and then um, Source is going to help Mar get up there. Awesome. Abel. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, Kaimana, go ahead and at the end of your turn, roll a d20 for me, please. Three. A three. Um, all right. Let's see. All right, so um, you manage to kind of like you're you're clearing through this area and you make it through a space with there's no complications once you get Mar on your back and you're kind of tearing off through the area. Um, all right, Abel, uh, what are you doing on your round? I believe I have the slowest speed at thirty, mm -hmm. so I am going to run and dash. Okay, so you make it full sixty, so you get up to behind where. Um, Mar is with uh, Kamana, and then um, so you get up that far. All right, good. Uh, Alora is also going to dash up, and so she'll catch up with you. Um, go ahead and roll a d20 for me, Abel. I can do just that. Diaz. Ten. Okay. <laughs> I, I was literally, I was in my head, I was counting in Spanish, and I hadn't gotten to ten yet. So, <laughs> um, all right. So there's, as you're kind of, you're like the fastest Abel has ever run, and you're like, oh, this is great, this is fantastic. And just at the moment where you're about to catch up with Source uh, or with Kaimana and Mar, you hear a sound uh, coming from the brush to your right. And mm -hmm. out of the brush, you see this beautiful, like, bluish white stag. Uh, like this, it's, you know, like these swirling patterns in its fur. It's uh, gigantic antlers spread out with, like, uh, luminous fungus growing on them and shining in the light. Seems spooked by something, and it breaks in front of you. Um, go ahead and roll a dexterity saving throw to see if you can dodge out of the way of this stampeding creature. A dexterity saving throw. This is something you're really good at. Yeah. I'm sure it's not an a intelligence saving <laughs> <laughs> My brain Do will you stop know this. that you should get out of the way of a moving stack? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, oh, shoot. I wrote it and forgot. A uh, uh, 9 plus 1, a 10. All right. So you... Um, as this creature breaks out of the brush to your right, you kind of skid to a halt, but it clips you on the side um, and Jeez. it tears off through the other way, like it's running away from something. Um, and you take uh, three points of bludgeoning damage from the stag as it slams into you and knocks you back, and then you fall prone. So you'll have to use half of your movement speed Ooh. next round to stand up. This is brutal. Brutal, you, <laughs> you guys. guys are doing really oh. well on your first round. <laughs> This is your 30 second, like, head start. <laughs> so let's get them all out of the way now. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, and then Alora ran up to you, and she was fine. She didn't run into any complications. In fact, because she didn't run into complications, she won't dash. And she'll reach down, uh, Abel, and she'll grab you and lift you. So you don't have to waste your action to pick yourself up next turn. Uh -huh. All right, so that's good. All right, so uh, at the end of the first round before the wild hunt goes, so we have Mar and Kaimana at the front, Mar riding on Kaimana. Um, we have then Abel, Alora, and then, oh, and Soros. So you, you're, you're kind of not using your full movement to race ahead of everybody. You're just kind of guarding it just in case. Right, I, I'm, I'm going to match the slowest person. Okay. Um, and, <laughs> and, in case something happens oh, so bless. like in this case where mar fell down kaimana transferred so i was able to help kaimana 
I mean, Mar get on top of okay. Gaimana yeah. because I can run 45 as yeah. my normal movement. Yeah. I can I can pretty much keep up with everybody. So if I have to slow down, yep, and use my action right. for something. Yeah. So that turn you help Ka uh, Mar get up on to Gaimana. All right. So then it's the Wild Hunt's turn. All right. Cool. And I was going to say, Josh, I yeah. wanted to specify. Yeah. Um, I can do a challenge rating one half animal, mm -hmm. and a warhorse is one half challenge rating okay that's good yeah which has a speed of 60 60 nice Ooh. all right yeah. um good okay so then all right so the second round um kaimana you are leading mar and your charge through um so go ahead and so you're just gonna take off running at the full warhorse speed yeah. all right so you pull forward 60 feet that would be enough to cut into the third round as long as you don't run into any um complications so go ahead and roll a d20 for me come on six six all right so as you're charging forward like this like this new sp speed kind of uh like you're, you're moving much faster than you normally would and you're kind of bounding through and around corners. And there's a moment where you go to take a step and your foot goes out and there's not ground in front of you. Um, and you look down and there's a, okay, there's a about a 15 foot drop, um, kind of like a little ridge that goes down. Go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw to see, or you can do a strength check to see if you can clear the ridge without slowing down. Strength it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, seven. seven all right so you like you stumble off and you try to you you upright yourself enough that you do not like collapse to the ground when you fall but you do take um four points of bludgeoning damage from the 15 foot drop um, and but you and that kind of slows you down for the second round. So you don't pull forward into the third uh, round with your bonus movement, uh, but you also don't lose any movement with that. All right, good. Um, so then Kaimana's riding on Mars, so you're safe. Uh, Abel, um, you. Oh no, Alora. Alora <laughs> is riding on Kaimana. <laughs> Uh, Can I do something while I'm still here? Sure, what would you like to do while you're on top? I would like to pull out my crossbow that I think I've never used in this campaign. Okay. And <laughs> I would like to hold uh, just a shot on that if I see anyone from uh, the wild hunt. Okay, so the moment you see something you want to fire. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, good. Uh, good, which takes us to Alora. She's just going to charge forward and, again, again, rolls really well and doesn't face any complications. So we still have Mar and Kai Mana at the front, and then Alora. Abel, what are you going to do this round? Run and dash. Okay, so you run and dash. Go ahead and roll a d20 for me. Uh, seven? Seven. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Is it another? Is another wild stag? Appeared? No, no, that was the that was a, a wild stag. I was gonna stag. be really delighted if that was the case. No, that was his ten. Um, no, so you you're like, ah, oh, shit! You're like, buddy, you're running really fast, and you round around another corner, smack into a giant spider web, <laughs> and Jesus. like it catches you, and you kind of do the like charge forward and then whipped back thing again. Um, and you're able to bust out of it, but you lose uh, half of your movement speed, so you drop to the back of the pack. <laughs> Alright, so Soros, you're coming around the corner, and you charge around the corner, and you see <laughs> Abel whiplashed by this spider web, um, and you're charging around. What are you doing on yours? Uh, I, I wait for him. Okay, so, so you, I match him. I match him. You wait, and then you, you kind of pull forward. So, so, um, so basically, I keep him from falling over, and push him back into the field of prey. Good. So at this no. point, um, Mar, Kaimana, and Alora have shot ahead of everybody else. They're probably 30 or 40 feet ahead of you two now at this point, and you two are further back. Um, it's at that moment that you hear behind you uh, like a thut sound, um, and 14's not going to hit you, Saurus, right? 
Nope. Okay, so um, as you kind of pause to like wait for Abel, you see like this bolt flat right, like kind of right past your head and bury itself in the ground in front of you. Um, and you kind of, you're seeing it's just a normal crossbow bolt, uh, but the, the wild hunt is firing at you from somewhere. Um, you still can't see them, um, but they're there. Um, no, you're too far ahead, Mars. So you wouldn't have, you wouldn't see what they're Actually, doing. Actually, since I didn't burn an yeah. action, can I use that for perception? Yeah. Check? So once the bolt flies past your head, go ahead and roll a perception check. Uh, perception, perception, sixteen. Sixteen. Okay, and then with that, you like we're looking back in the direction of where this bolt flew, and it's almost like willing yourself to focus. There's like this wavy like pattern that kind of goes between your eyes and it's almost like they your vision kind of clears and there's this cloud that's wiped away and you clearly now see these four figures. Um, two of them have made it fully off of the ridge um, and mm -hmm. one of them is standing on top of the ridge with a very large crossbow and they were the one that fired in your direction. Um, and then the other one is the, the, the biggest one is still up there just kind of waiting. Uh, but two have made it down and are charging in your direction, and then the, the two are look like they're about to. Time to go, Abel. And you can now see them, so mm -hmm. you've got you, you've got a beat on them. All right, top of the third. Um, come on up. Go ahead and uh, you're dashing forward still? Yeah. Okay, so you got a full 60. It could take you into the fourth round uh, if you don't run into any complications. Go ahead and roll a d20 for me. Yeah, about that. <laughs> Oh, that's a 15. Oh, you're good. So you charge forward and you are like going around the turns and you're like, um, like Tokyo drifting it, you know, like you're, you're covering a, a lot of ground. Um, and you, you make it into what would be the fourth leg of the journey, but you've now very clearly left behind, um, the rest of your group. I am going to kind of like just take a, Okay. All right, so we'll pause there. So you're going to kind of wait till everybody else catch up, catches up with you. Okay. See. So you want me to dismount? And then I'm going to try and grab the slowest and relay it. Cool. I jump off. Okay. So Mar, you jump off. Um, so Mar, you're technically a round ahead of everybody else. Um, and then come on on the next round, you're going back to pick somebody else up. Perfect. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Um, so Mars now at the top, and then Kaiman is heading backwards. Abel. Run and dash. All right, go ahead and roll a <laughs> d20 for me. Oh, Josh, did I need to roll a d20 for you? Uh, no, because he carried you, so you're you're safe. Oh. You kind of were protected by his. Nice. Nice. Are you going to continue holding that action? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, for good. this, for this round at least, yeah. All right, sounds good. A nine. A nine. Um, so Abel, <laughs> Jesus, really poor God, Abel. Knocked me down again. <laughs> so Abel, you, um, you break free from the spider web and you and Soros are now charging forward and you, like, you realize that the path is kind of switchbacking on itself and so at some point you're just like, I'm gonna bust through. And so you just tear straight through into the woods um, and you cut through and you hit the path again and you see that it's circling around and you keep going through. And there's a moment when you bust through the, the, the forest and it opens up and there is just a field, like not a field, like 30 or 40 of those green flowers uh, right in front of you. Uh, and you have just a moment to jump before you mm -hmm. are going to slam right into them. So go ahead and make a dexterity saving throw. Swear to God. Abel's horrible, terrible, no good, very good. <laughs> <laughs> Athletics is not his strong suit. Well, that saving throw got me an eight there, good little fella. All right, so you go to jump and you just, like, you like jump and then land smack in the middle of them. And your, your energy carries you forward and you find yourself on the path again. Uh, but you are now slowed. So you have half movement. Yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> no reactions, one action on your turn. So you can't dash. Uh, 
Or cool. you can you can dash, but it would be a half speed. All right. Um, so that yeah, this takes... is where you're gonna get on the back of Kaimana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and then mm -hmm. Alora charges Kaimana forward. Alora is rolling. He's coming back for you. Alora is rolling really well, so she's still good. So Alora good. continues to follow the path. Uh, and at some point she gets so far ahead and she hears Abel behind her, like bust through the forest, but she pulls ahead. Um, so then Abel's back there. Soros, <laughs> did you follow Abel through the forest or did you keep running on the path? I kept running on the path because I can, I can basically every, I'm fast enough that every time I switch back, he's going, ah! Yeah, so he's cutting straight and it's just like, whoa! Whoa! <laughs> and then finally, the last one, you see him just like face plant, <laughs> and he like gets up and he's like, Soros. <laughs> and um, so, Soros, are you you, you kind of are hanging with Abel? Uh, go ahead and roll a d20 for me, Soros. Hanging with Abel. Uh, nineteen. Nineteen. You're good. Uh, um, so sticking to the path was a smart plan because you're able to do that. All right. So that takes us to. Um, they don't catch up. So, uh, the, so the wild hunt. Now that you've keyed into them, you can actually hear the galloping behind you, Soros, and it's getting louder and closer. But they don't manage to catch up to you on this turn, and this is such a switchback that they can't get a clear view on you in this round. All right, heading okay. into our last rounds, um, Kaimana, you head back to go pick up Abel. So you're able to catch up with him with your normal movement, um, and then. He can get on your back and then you want to dash back. Yeah. Okay, so that gets you back up to where Mar is. So you're now back up to her with Abel on your back. Go ahead and roll a d20 to make sure you're not slowed down in that process. Fifteen again. Fifteen, perfect, yeah. Uh, just a, a general thing, if you're rolling over a, an eleven, you're doing it with enough skill that you're probably not going to run into any issues. Um, so you you grab Abel and definitely make your way back uh, to uh, the front up there. Perfect. Um, which means Abel does my head against his neck and I rub the side of his neck. <laughs> uh, Mar, you have the opportunity in this round to get the to the last. Like you could end your race on this round if you want to move ahead, or you can sit and wait for the rest of your group gonna wait for the rest of the group and okay, hold so uh, the action with the crossbow mar holds um good alora charges forward and once again she's rolled at 13 14 15 like in that range every time um so she charges forward and so then the next thing you see you see kaimana come out with abel who's like moving like this it was weird uh and then alora comes uh, kind of charging out and she's like what what is it i don't know like you took off so quickly i don't know where we're going just go. <laughs> okay. Um, and we're there. Um, Soros, uh, you saw Kaibata charge back and you helped Abel up on there. So that's your action, but you can still dash forward um, to catch up with everybody if you want to on this round. Yep. Okay. And go ahead and roll a d20 for me. Uh, 11. 11. You're good. That, was, that clears it. Um, but... At the end of your round, Soros, there's a, a moment where you, you're kind of clearing the last thing and that sound of hoof beating is getting louder and you're hearing it crash through the thunderbrush. The thunderbrush? The underbrush? Um, and thunderbrush. <laughs> the thunderbrush. Um, and you hear, like, it, like, you hear one of these beasts kind of, like, curse out of, yes. <laughs> like, come around the corner. Um, and you There's see a this Thunderdome joke in there somewhere, but you went someplace completely I was different. I'm thinking um, Thunderstruck, but Thunderstruck. <laughs> 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 you, see, you see this glint behind you. Um, so, Soros, I need you to roll a dexterity saving throw. And also, who else is at the back there? Alora will have to roll one, too. Do I get the haste spell at some point? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Right. 21. You're good. Um, and she rolled a natural 20, so she's good too. So what you see, you see this like, uh, a, another bolt is fired from, this is one of the smaller members of the wild hunt, is charging around the corner here, and he releases this bolt, and it opens up into this net that seems to be made almost of like gossamer, uh, but it's flying through the air in your direction, and you're able to just kind of dodge out of the way, and just at the last minute, you gently kick out with your foot, and that pushes Alora backwards. And so it kind of passes between the two of you and 
crumbles to the ground, and the moment it hits the ground, it shatters. Um, almost like, like, just like, a, like sugar, pulled apart sugar that you slap onto the ground, it just shatters. And then the, the net disintegrates there, and so the Wild Hunt does not able to, to, to purchase there. Um, all right. Did I see the... The dude? Oh yeah, yeah. So this would shot? give you this would give you an eye on him. So go ahead and roll your attack, Mar. Cool. I, I like the way we're running. Like when we get back to our lands, it, they'll stop chasing us. <laughs> they may not leave. I mean, that's that's real. They may not want to leave if that's a lot of effort. That's mm -hmm. what I'm hoping. Uh, Twenty six. Oh yeah, that hits. Okay. Um, what is my what's my crossbow? It's probably a D six. Why does it say a D8? Is that oh, right? It might, it might yep. be a heavy crossbow. Okay. Sorry, this, this, I don't know if you'd see like this, <laughs> this dice has like all this like, like vine stuff on it. So it's so <laughs> hard to see what's going on with it. Um, oh, that is an eight. That is an eight. It is 13 points of damage. 13 points of damage. Nice. Um, so he comes around and fires off this net and you almost like you shoot your bolt like through the, the net. And oh, it's yeah. like the arrow, they're just passing and it just chinks right into his shoulder. Um, and he actually maintains balance on his horse. Um, so he kind of gets knocked back, but then he sit, sits forward and you see him like loading the crossbow bolt again. And, and he's just waiting uh, as this, and you can hear the sound of the horses getting closer as well. Um, Great, right. I reload my bow as well. <laughs> all right, and so this is our final chase. So they have, uh, they are still probably 30 feet behind you. So they're about half a leg behind you but they are on horseback, so they're running about as quickly as Kaimana is. Um, so this is your last round to see if you can make it to where Mar thinks the portal is um, in that final round. So what we've a, got- What a, a fun, what a fun Ooh, time if Mar's absolutely wrong and we're just in a cave with right. a dead end. Um, oh, no, 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 no. There's going to be a, there's going to be a spider queen. <laughs> All right, so you've got um, Kaimana and Abel at the front. So Kaimana, you're charging forward. Get out of here. Yes. Okay, so the path goes around, and as you're running around, it, it kind of clears around, and then it opens up into this uh, open clearing, and you see directly in front of you, there's kind of uh, there's a risen hill, and in the center of this hill, there is a cavern, and the game path seems to be heading in that direction. So you head that way? Okay, go ahead and roll your final d20 for me. Six. Uh, uh, roll again because you've yeah, already encountered okay. that difficulty. One more time. Is that yeah. What'd you say? Just roll one more time because you already you've already encountered that danger. So. Yeah. Oh. New danger. Am I able to help at all or no? You're just you're slow on his back. Nineteen. You're good. Um. So. You, you charge forward and you uh, you bust into the cave and the cave kind of descends down and wraps around a little bit. And there's a moment where like you feel like you like are running through a curtain of rain, um, but nothing really changes. And then you kind of get onto the other side and you you reach that edge and you're waiting. Um, all right, uh, Abel, you go across with him. So you're good. Uh, Alora, all Can good. I hold an action? Yeah, you can hold an action. What would you like to hold? Um, can I hold an Eldritch Blast? Oh, if I... you, to, to use a held action, you have to have a reaction. But go ahead and roll a constitution oh, saving throw. No to see. Yeah, see, roll a constitution saving throw. See, see. I'm supposed to be good at those con saves. Uh, 16? Okay, good. So actually your slow releases, so you can hold an action. Okay, I want to hold an Eldritch Blast. Okay, you're holding an Eldritch Blast for whenever you see an enemy. Um, good. Uh, Alora catches up. You see her. It's weird. You turn around, Kaimana, and you're waiting. And like there, it's just like the cave is beyond you, and you're kind of wa watching back from where you came from. And you're like, where is everybody? I don't see anybody. And then suddenly, <laughs> Alora just appears out of the air in front of you. Um, and she kind of drops there. She's like, oh, uh, okay, I think that everyone else is right behind me. Um, Soros, where are you at? Um, is there anybody else? Mar Marlo? You and Marlo. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um... You guys can I make wanna... this leg together if you want, or you can run yep. separately. Uh, let Marlo go first. Okay, Marlo, go ahead. Um, you tear forward, go ahead and roll a D your final d20. <laughs> 17. 
Six. Six. Um, <laughs> so you hit the cave entrance, and mm -hmm. um, Kaimana was able to jump it because it was not, like, for his warhorse frame, it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, mm -hmm. But there is a ten-foot kind of, like, decline right at the entrance of the cave. Go ahead and roll a dexterity mm -hmm. saving throw to see if you can make it without uh, issue. 24. You're good. So you you, you you kind of step and you're like, whoop, and you jump over it and land deftly on the other side and you charge forward. And just as before, you all are awaiting. And then out of thin air, Mar appears right in front of you all, kind of slightly out of breath and and, and, and they're uh, ready to go. Soros. Uh, I will run and dash. Okay. Go ahead and make your final dexterity saving throw. Survey says... Uh, eight plus seven, excuse me, eight plus five, um, is 13. You're good. All right. So you, uh, the final member of your group, um, and Soros, right as you are, uh, you enter into the cave mouth, you hear the, the neighing, uh, of these, the wild hunt kind of there, but you hear them skitter to a halt. Um, and one of them just says, as you enter into the cave, it says, I assume you'll be back for another round sometime soon. And you head into the cave and disappear. Um, and Soros reappears there in front of you. Um, and now you are all here. And Mar, you realize, like, this is the same cave. We've left the Feywild. I need everybody to roll a, uh, a wisdom saving throw. That's a of intelligence, man. <laughs> 12. Okay, you're good. 21, uh, 21, 21 okay. as well. Okay. A ten. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's not a good sign from the <laughs> oh, boy. You t a ten. Okay. Um, uh, uh, Laura, who rolled consistently fantastic during the whole chase and rolled a natural one um, on her saving throw. So you're all there and like, you're like breath and you're like looking behind you and you realize like you've gone through another fey portal um, and you feel the difference. Like uh, the air, this is summertime in the plane um, and you feel the, the temperature rise. Like you've left the winter forest um, and the, the temperature increases and you, you realize like as you're walking out of this cavern, like there, the woods in front of you, like, we're back home. Um, and suddenly, like, Alora's sitting there and she's like, why are we in a cave? <laughs> and Abel, you, you suddenly, when she asks that, you, you're like, yeah, like, why are we in a cave? <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing here? And as far as you can tell, the last, you guys were in the Feywild for about 12 hours. The last 12 hours seem a little hazy you don't really you can't really recall what where you've been or what you've been doing you you remember going into the deep wood and now you are exiting out of a cavern and you can't really recall what like it was nighttime and you can see like the early like rays of early morning sunlight coming through the the trees um but you're ah, not but of which day you're not sure <laughs> mm. um so with our final thing let me see what that does. Okay. Don't want to remember what happened in the Feywild. <laughs> oh, actually, let me, let me rec I should have rolled that first before I described anything. Um, so let me double check math. All right. So you, as you come out of the, the cave and you guys realize that Alora and Abel are both really confused about what's going on and you look up and in like the the glimpses of the sky that you can catch through the forest canopy um it still seems to be nighttime um but as kind of, as uh, as marlo has told you before you you're not sure is it the same night is it several nights from now <laughs> is it several years from now you're not sure um but I guess we will figure that out next week. <laughs> and so exiting the payload, we will pick up there. All right. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we will see you all next week.